Okay, we are going to share screen. Talking about rest, uh, I have this experience uh, about two years ago where I lost my passport in China, uh, in Guangxi, Nanning. Uh, as you know, in Nanning, there is no embassy, okay, no consulate. So I have to take a train uh, to Guangzhou okay, to report the loss of my passport. It was a very trying experience. It was a costly mistake. So I missed my flight on that day when I discovered I lost my passport. And then while waiting for a new pass to go back to a temporary pass to go back to Singapore, I chanced upon this uh, place where I can sleep overnight. They provide massage, they provide food, they provide lodging, all in one. So I was able to sleep in this cubicle. Wow, so nice. It was a good rest. Why do I choose this? Because if I go to a common area to sleep, a lot of people will be snoring and I cannot sleep. So this one is good. Today's story is about uh, David and Bathsheba. Okay, as you know, you have read the head of time. David was supposed to go for war, right? Together with his uh, people. But he didn't. So what happened? He decided to rest from God, not rest in God. Rest from God. So he, he and saw this lady in... Uh, Can I request somebody to uh, silent your mute your, your can you mute it because I cannot mute I think it's from iPhone eh? okay kindly mute otherwise there will be disturbance so what happened you know the rest of the story okay David and Bathsheba Okay, can we ask uh, Victor to read this? Psalm 32. Victor. When I kept silent, my bones became bitter through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was drained as in the drops of summer. Okay, sin takes away the rest. Okay, getting back has a cost, which is repentance. So the story of David's sin and repentance is a notable example of this process. I have sinned, what should I do? Conceal it, confess it. So there are two choices. Then what? And then you suffer the consequences of sin and then ask for a new heart and then you will have new words and actions so that's today's story okay let's read the memory text can we ask gm to read for us read in me a new a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing heart. Psalm 51 verses 10 to 12. Yeah. You see, when uh, David, how he started sinning. So we recall the chain of events that lead to his sin. Number one, he did not fulfill his duty as a king. 
which he's supposed to do. Okay, to go to war with his soldiers. He did not do that. Okay, then when he saw a naked woman bathing, okay, he did not turn away, but took pleasure in the temptation. Then what, what, what else? He found a way to fulfill his desire. What did he do? Instead of uh, enjoying that moment, he just he invited Bathsheba to come to his palace. And then he committed the sin of adultery. So it, it, you can see, eh? uh, this is uh, Bathsheba is Uriah's wife. So if somebody's home uh, is very near the king's palace, uh, this soldier is of a high-ranking officer. So later on, Bathsheba came and told the king that she's pregnant. So instead of uh, confessing, he tried to conceal his sin by asking Uriah to come back from the battle, from the battlefield. And then make him drunk and ask him to go back to, to his house and to sleep with his wife. And then you know that Uriah is a very righteous man. He said his man is fighting the battle. And then his superior, Joab, the commander, is also fighting. So his subordinates and his uh, superior is fighting. He cannot afford to indulge in the pleasure of his wife. So he decided to sleep with his uh, David's servants okay, in the courtyard. And then what to do? He arranged for a murder. He wrote a letter through the hand of Uriah and passed it to Joab. Uriah did not open the letter. And that letter instructed Joab to create a murder. Okay, to create a scene where they will attack the Ammonites. Then after that, the soldiers were to withdraw without Uriah's awareness. So Uriah together with a few Israelites, they were killed. So not only Uriah died, some of the Israelites also died. And then after he, he died, he tried to conceal his sin by marrying Bathsheba. So the king is actually sovereign. He can do whatever he wants. Okay, let's look at this. Huh? Can we ask Lawrence to read this for us? Lawrence, can you unmute and read this for us? I remember when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. James 1, 13 to 15. Yeah. Do not say eh, when you fall into sin, the devil make you do it. Right. It is your own desire. Okay, desire comes from your upbringing. For example, if you were a former smoker, you will be tempted to smoke again. If you were a former alcoholic, you will be tempted to uh, indulge in alcohol, right? Similarly, if you are a former playboy, you will be tempted by women. So if you entertain that thought, it will start to entice you. And then you did not ask God to give you strength to overcome. And then you slowly got dragged away. And then the desire gave birth to sinful actions. And the sin allowed to grow. It becomes a habit. And then it gives birth to death. And that's the result of sin. Eh? So don't blame the devil. Be responsible for your own actions. 
Of course, God did not allow it to. Uh, uh, this uh, quotation say, but the thing that David has done displeased the Lord. Okay, probably it's an understatement. Displeased the Lord. Lord was very angry. And he sent Nathan uh, to show him his uh, sin. But Nathan was also very discreet. He told him a story uh, about this man. This poor man has only a baby lamb. Whereas this king or this nobleman has many, many sheep. Then when a traveler came, instead of using his own sheep to entertain the traveler, he took from this man's only sheep. Okay. And then uh, David, when he heard it, he got so angry and said, this man deserved to die. And he is, and the man who took from the poor man, the noble man who took from the poor man, the sheep, must pay him four times. Then Nathan said, you are the man. Okay, You are the king. You have many concubines. You have wives. Whereas Uriah has only one wife. You took his wife. Okay. You did not find pleasure in your own concubines and wives. You took somebody else. You are the one. So he, David pronounced his own judgment. Okay, can be asked. Uh, Paul, can you read this? So David said to Nathan, I've seen against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord also has brought away your sin. You shall not die. Yeah. So the pronouncement that he made on himself did not fulfill. Okay. He did not die, but he will suffer the consequences. God did not sit back and do nothing. He reacted to David's fragrant sin by sending prophet Nathan. So Nathan used a parable to touch David's conscience, appealing to David's sense of justice and his experience as a shepherd. David's repentance went beyond feeling guilt over his sin against Uriah and Bathsheba. He understood that he had sinned against God, not just to Uriah and Bathsheba. So our sins ultimately hurt God when we hurt other people and drive another nail into the rough beam pointing heavenward on Golgotha, that is putting Jesus on the cross again. But thank God for Jesus' sacrifice. There's an immediate response to our true repentance. The Lord also has put away your sin. Now the question is, had Nathan not confronted David, would he have repented? Why did Nathan use a parable instead of directly pointing out his sin? Okay, this is something to discuss. Anyone? If Nathan did not come, would David's conscience prick him to finally admit? What do you think? Uh, I think David has been living with a guilty conscience for quite a while. And I think it bothered him. Only thing, he doesn't know how to, to overcome his conscience without telling anybody. So he has been eating up, eating his, himself up for, for quite a while before Nathan came to see him. Okay. What about the rest? Do you think he will... Does God sometimes send some people to tell us our thoughts? If somebody didn't tell you your fault, would you have repented? And what is that that keeps us from uh, confessing our sin? Yes, Sister Helen. 
I think it's very easy for us to see other people's mistakes than our own. We always are very judgmental, but we, we always think we are, we are perfect, unfortunately. You're right, huh? because when uh, Nathan told the parable, right, he can straight away see the nobleman's uh, sin. But actually, it was him. But he did not see it. Okay? You're right. Eh? So likely due to pride, we, we want to appear as perfect as possible in the eyes of others. Okay? But we refuse to admit wrong. When I counsel people about relationship with others, I always hear a wife or a husband saying that the fault is with her wife or with the, with the spouse, not with themselves. Same here in any dispute, man. it's always somebody's fault, not your own fault. Okay, I think this is pride and this is sin. Rarely do you see a person uh, talking about their own sin. Let me ask you, when you go for a job interview in your resume, uh, did you put any of the mistakes that you have made in your previous employment? Uh, do you put down there you come late? Do you put down there the reason for your previous termination? Okay. Very interesting that uh, you compare the Bible and other holy scriptures. Uh, when they talk about holy men in the scriptures, they don't talk about their faults. But the Bible is very upfront with all the Bible characters. If they are wrong, it means it's wrong. They just write it as it is. They did not want to hide. So it's very dangerous huh, to be one of the Bible characters. Everybody will know your sin, your fault. So anyone has an answer for why did Nathan use a parable instead of telling him directly? Anyone? Uh, I think God wants to know what kind of judgment David will pronounce upon the, the so-called person because Jesus said that by whatever means you judge other people, it shall be judged upon you also. So when David told Nathan that he had to pay the other person four times, the same punishment was also given to David. He had to punish four times and so forth for the death of, uh, of Nathan, no, of death of Uriah. Uh, in the reverse, uh, if Nathan were to point out to David his sin directly, uh, would it have the same effect if he were to tell a parable? Would the effect be, be different? What would be the possible consequence if Nathan were to point to David's sin directly? Anyone? You can think of Jesus uh, telling parables to the Pharisees. Okay. The parable is actually a story, but it's talking about them, but not directly pointing at them. It was in there. So you can see when Jesus uses parables, uh, they sometimes pronounce their own sin, point out their own mistake. If Jesus were to use direct message to them, these people will reject it straight away, right? And will probably take action to harm Jesus. So similarly, by using parable, Nathan is protecting himself. Otherwise, the king's wrath huh, will put Nathan to death, you know? Say, how dare you talk to the king like that? Okay. Probably pride will take over. So there are a lot of advantages huh, when you use parable to tell somebody's fault. Don't be so direct. Okay. But sometimes there's this the being direct is necessary. So we can learn something from this story. Okay, David, your turn to read. Okay, 
Okay, consequences of sin. He must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 6. Okay, this is what uh, David said to, him, to, to Nathan uh, about that man who took the lamb from the poor man rather than use his own lamb. Okay. David was immediately forgiven, but God did not prevent the consequences of his sin. What was the consequences? David sentenced himself to the loss of four of his sons. First son was Bathsheba's uh, child. We do not know what is the gender. Then the second one uh, was Amon, Absalom, and Adijon, Adon, Nijah. So David lost four of his children. However, repentance also had, had consequences. David recovered no, 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 no. the joy of his salvation. Okay. God forgave an adulterer, manipulator, murderer. Wouldn't he also forgive us too? God's grace is so great that he's willing to forgive us no matter how serious our sins are. No doubt David's sin was great, but God's forgiveness is even greater. Would you like to say amen? Why didn't God take away the consequences of his sin since he really sincerely repented? Why does God allow the innocent child to suffer and die for the sins of David, especially the child that was born of Bathsheba? The child did not survive. Even though David, after he truly repented, forgiven by God, and then he fasted since the day the child became ill until the child died. Why didn't God allow the child to be healed? Anyone? Anyone want to attempt to answer? Uh, the, uh, Pastor, is that right? Yes. Because God, uh, God is sovereign. He has the authority to do what he wants. We cannot question him on his action. He has uh, authority to make the decision and carry out without any, any, any uh, one questioning. He's sovereign. Okay, that's your answer. Huh? Anyone agree with him? Yes, Sister Ellen. I think, as you say, he's an innocent child. But if he were allowed to live, I think he will always have a blemish in his life. I think it's better that we <laughs> okay, if you reason it this way, yeah. What what about the the rest? Oh, the wages of sin is death. We are told. Yeah. And and for our salvation, uh, this has cost Christ his life. Yes. So if if God just does away with the consequences then we won't be the wiser as to how devastating our sinful actions can be. Okay, that's a good point, GM. You, you point out the fact that when if God doesn't take away the consequences of our sin, then we will understand and realize the magnitude of our sin. And the chances of repeating that sin will not be there. Can you imagine? When God forgive us and after we truly repented and the consequences, we don't feel it. Being sinful and having pride, there's a tendency for us to repeat the sin. Can you imagine uh, if a man always visit a prostitute and then when he diagnosed with AIDS, uh, ask God, Lord, save me. And then the AIDS disappeared. What are the chances for him to visit the prostitute again? Okay. Same here with many things. Uh, like a smoker got lung cancer and then God healed him. The temptation to go back to smoking is so great you know, because 
he has God who will forgive him and take away the consequences of his sin. So this is a very telling uh, example of why God allowed the consequences of sin to come into our lives. God take, can forgive us. Forgiveness is actually a spiritual aspect. Okay, What we have done, the consequences of it, and many times it will either leave us a painful scar, physically or emotionally, or even spiritually, that we can learn lesson from it in the future. Okay, do you recognize this gentleman on, on your left? Do you know who is he? Uh, Catherine, do you know who is he? No idea. He looks familiar, but I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, Annie, you know who is he? The one on the left with the white hair. He looks like Pastor Kong. Yes, know. this is uh, Pastor Kong He. Uh, the one, one the founding pastor of the City Harvest. At one time was the biggest church in Singapore. And you know, 10 years ago, or slightly more than 10 years ago, there was a case about his project called the crossover where he used the church building fund to fund the evangelistic outreach to the secular people and of course uh, this was done without a consensus of the church members and these funds are cannot be and then there was a lot of manipulation so he fought the case for more than five years okay he because of the decision to do this crossover project, even involving his wife uh, to sing some music that is not acceptable. So a lot of members left the church. Then when the trial, during the trial, many of the uh, senior pastors, accountants, managers, uh, auditors, uh, they are also dragged into this uh, terrible act. And that time he keeps saying that he did nothing wrong and he fought the case. I think he spent a lot, millions of dollars, you know, to fight the case. The case involved about 50 million Singapore dollars. Now, why do I want to bring this up? Because uh, you know the story, uh, he was eventually sentenced to three and a half years in jail. Some people say, how come so like involved 50 million, you know? But the judge say he did not pocket for himself. Okay, but wrong is wrong. I want to share with you a, a rare footage huh, of the interview of. Uh, wait, uh, hold on. Can you all see the video now? I want to play the video so that you there was an interview about him and listen to his uh, confession. Which was more difficult for you, right? The process of the trial and the media attention, uh, negative press, or your time in prison. I know that you know the, your prison time was a bit difficult and, and tough for you. How would you describe your the, the, which was the worst experience for you? I think both. <laughs> it was hard all the way. I can tell you, the 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 media was tough. Uh, the whole court trial was the investigation was very tough. The two year investigation uh, with the CAD was, was very tough. And then the five year process in the court was very tough. And then prison in maximum security was very tough. So I, I, every, every part of the way was very difficult. And without the grace of God, I would have collapsed. You know? And so you, you learn something, you, you learn in every process, every part of the process that you go through, you learn more about yourself and you learn your weaknesses. 
you learn your thoughts and you, you learn to be better, to do better. But most importantly, I, I believe you learn to, to be more like Christ throughout. So I, I can't really tell you which is more difficult. It seems to me in every season I was in from 2010, part of the way it was, oh, <laughs> it was very hard. <laughs> All right. Um, I, you know, I, you shared with me a little bit about your uh, prison experience, and I, I guess it was probably one of the lowest points in your life. Uh, you know, our prisons can be a bit spotted and uh, very regimented life, and, uh, and some, and you know, you are put into a prison cell with some angry people, you know, <laughs> uh, criminal uh, type. Uh, now, um, tell us, how did you get through that difficult period? I know mentally it was must have been a, a big, a huge stress upon you. How did you get through that whole period? Uh, yeah, uh, as the young, it was a very humbling experience, and I felt very broken. Uh, first of all, you know, you're put in. A, we we all have this idea that when you go to prison, maybe it's from the movies. You have this <laughs> bars, you know, from top from the ceiling to the floor, and you can put your hands out and you can talk to people. But but in Changi prison. You know, you're in an enclosed room. I mean, it is, it is, uh, the wall is so thick, the door is so heavy. And uh, basically, you're locked in. You couldn't see people outside your room. You're locked in 23 hours every single day. Just think about it. And just pause for a moment. <laughs> just think about it. 23 hours a day, you're locked inside. Uh, it was very, very difficult. And the, the, the size of the cell is uh, 17 feet by 17 feet. I mean, we have a lot of time, so I measure everything, you know, <laughs> just to kill time. <laughs> so uh, it's, it, the Singapore weather is very hot. And, you know, the eastern part of Singapore, it, it doesn't rain as much as the west. And uh, so some days you just feel like you're in the sauna. It's, it's, most days it feels like 35, 36 degrees. It's very, very, very hot. And uh, you sleep on concrete floors. And so uh, there's no bed, there's no pillow. Uh, yeah, and, and in that kind of uh, uh, humidity and heat, we just learn <laughs> to sleep with just our shorts on. And uh, it was a very humbling experience. Uh, the first day I was at the yard, uh, this was in the first week. And the first day I was in the yard. I think three times a week, we can spend an hour in the yard. And, and I was just walking, uh, just walking, just trying to get some, some exercise. And there was a, a gang there. And, uh, there was one of the gang members uh, raised his voice and, and started to shout at me. He said, said, uh, said you know, we, we are gangsters and we committed crimes. And uh, we are very open about it. But here is a hypocrite. Here is a man who calls himself a holy man, a religious leader. But he has swindled all the, the old people and the children. And he has swindled them of the money. He said, if I ever come close to him, I'm going to kill him. It was my first day. <laughs> the first few minutes when I walk around the place. I mean, it. It is, prison can be a scary place. Okay, let's listen to his, uh, his wrong uh, that has affected his family. Sometimes. It's very, how has it been, uh, been with, in the relationships? Have you, uh, have you experienced some, some form of problems uh, and how are you sort of coping with the relationships? You know, I mean, the truth of the matter is that the people who are closest to me, who are all uh, affected and hurt by what has happened in the last 10 years. I mean, nobody has gone through this unscared, right? So I think for some, it was very, very difficult. Uh, it, you know, uh, it was so hard. And she didn't know uh, when I was going to get out. And so, as a dutiful wife, she knew that she got to hold the church together. And because she was the co-founder, 
And so in, in a church that of our size, it's very easy to to treat when you go through a trial because we are humans, you know, it's very easy when you go through a trial for for uh, factions to just 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 go different ways. So Sun felt that look, maybe maybe Paul will get out maybe soon. So why don't I just hold the church together? And uh, I have a few friends, very successful friends. And they said, you know, the, the best thing for you to do, Kong, is to protect the family. And maybe ask your wife to go overseas. Have some quiet rest and just be away from people. And Sun felt that, look, Kong, I, I want to be here. I want to be here to visit with you, to see you once every two weeks. I want to be here for the church. And so she was just amazing. But in that whole process, uh, uh, it affected her emotionally. It was a very traumatic 10 years for her, especially when I was away. And um, she's diagnosed with PTSD, post-traumatic, post uh, post-traumatic post syndrome disorder. Yeah. And so she's still going through it. And, uh, but she's getting stronger. And God is healing her. And for my boy, it was very hard for him. I mean, you know, my boy is Gen Z, right? And they, they are born with the internet. <laughs> you just you just go Google. Sometimes innocently, uh, he Googled something and boom, a face pop out. And, she, and he gets to read all the nasty articles. And of course that affected him. And it was it was very tough. Uh, in the initial years when I was first arrested and he was in primary school and sometimes the photographers, the media people who go to the school outside the school and it, it affected him a lot, you know, and so he, he's, he, I would say he's still processing it, but Dan is such a good boy, you know, I mean, for some variety was grown up in such an environment. I'm just grateful that he loves the Lord. He, he loves the church. He's proud of me. And uh, I have Bible study with him every week. He's reading the Bible. I'm just happy. <laughs> I'm just happy that, that he's still with the Lord and he loves the Lord. My parents, and if you have seen my, uh, Pastor Young, if you have met my dad, he has aged so much. Of course, he's 92. And he's become so frail. And uh, so for my dad, he wakes up every morning at 2 a.m. pray for me. And so it has been just a very, very difficult time for the entire family. And of course, for my siblings as well. I have three sisters and one other brother. My in-laws have been really supportive and amazing. They Okay, uh, you have heard some of the excerpts uh, of uh, Pastor Kong. That was the interview done uh, about three weeks ago. So it was a really recent thing. Uh, how he related his wrong, his mistake that lead to many chain reactions of consequences, affected his colleagues, his church, his family, his in-laws. So same here with uh, David. Uh, King David, when he committed uh, adultery and murder, the sin that he bore is not just for him, his loved ones and the whole country okay, was involved. So today's lesson uh, is a very sobering one, that we all need a lesson to learn the lesson from it. Okay? Let's continue with our study now. Let's continue with our study. Uh, those of you who are interested to listen to the whole recording, it's about 58 minutes, you will find out that uh, Pastor Kong He is truly a repented man. Okay? And he was a changed man. He related how he went into very powerful, very popular. He traveled half a month seldom see his wife and children, uh, son. And then he didn't listen to anybody. 
to somebody who is totally very hard. Of course, he was uh, released about two years ago. He went into six months of uh, silence in church to eight month, 18 months of sabbatical overseas. So he came back and uh, received this interview. Okay, can uh, Sister Helen read this from me? Uh, read this for us, sorry. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone brings him back. Let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sin. Yeah. Do you know that people, when they sin, because of pride, they did not want to repent. Because of what people may think of them, they, they want to cover. And God, in his own timing, would appoint people who, especially friends, who is willing to risk their unpopularity with you or with the person who commits the sin to tell you that you are wrong. And this is really something from God. Of course, the consequence is the friend who pointed out the sin of someone will either be a better friend, a closer friend, or turn into an enemy. Uh, if the person rejects the pointing out of the truth. So Nathan really risked his, uh, his life to tell David his fault. Okay, we have read this statement, create in me a clean heart of God and renew a steadfast spirit in me. So David asked God to erase his sin, to purify him, to change his thoughts and feelings. He did not want to rely on himself anymore, especially when you read Psalm 51. It was really a, a com true confession, true repentance of his sin. We can have the true safety, joy, and happiness by relying on God. Only the Holy Spirit can change our hearts this way. He leads us to sanctification, makes us new, strengthens us to resist temptation and give us rest. I want you to read the contrast between uh, Adam and Eve when they commit sin and how David, when he was pointed out. Okay, can we have uh, Claire to read this for us? Genesis 3, 8 to 9, and then uh, Psalm 51. Mm, okay, cannot see. <laughs> cannot see. Uh, oh. Sorry, Maybe. cannot see the words then. Yeah. Uh, we ask somebody who can see. Uh, I, I don't uh, have the words. Melissa, can you read for us? Can I see the, yeah, can I see the thing? Uh, the yeah. man and his wife hid themselves from, from the presence of God, of Lord God, but the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? Okay, the next one. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing heart to sustain me. Okay. You can see the contrast right? when people sin, right? they want to run away from God's presence. Okay? And then when God appears to them and points out their fault, they start to blame each other. When David was pointed out his fault, he wanted to come to God's presence. And then he did not blame anybody else. He did not blame Bathsheba for uh, taking a shower uh, in the full view of him. He did not blame uh, anybody that lead him to temptation. He did not blame the devil. Okay? He, he took responsibility for his own sin. Okay, you can see. Okay. Uh, Israel, can you read this for us? Psalm 51 verse 13. 
Well, then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Yeah. Psalms 51 30. So you can see when a person is truly repentant, uh, they will use their, they will give testimony to teach people not to follow his mistake. So David was ashamed of his sin, but he did not forget that, he did not forget that stain his record. However, there was something greater than shame, that is forgiveness. He could not stay silent. He had to warn others. So they did not make the same mistake. And they had to know God was willing to forgive them if they had sinned. So he told the whole kingdom that he had sinned. We cannot keep this important new secret, which is if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, can we have uh, Catherine to read this for us? My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. Psalms 21, 17. <clears throat> so, during that time, people are still killing lambs, right? As a form of sacrifice. David could have offered many, many sacrifices without announcing his guilt or his sin. But he said the ultimate sacrifice comes from the heart, the conversion. So same here. Today, God doesn't uh, accept our church attendance, our offerings, our service in place of true repentance. Okay, you can go to church regularly. You can give a big offering. You can be busy for God in church, but that will never replace your true contrite heart, which is the real sacrifice, right? A broken spirit. So if you rest from God, your heart becomes empty and you will start to seek other things uh, to replace God in your life. So look at this uh, St. Augustine. Uh, he said this uh, very classical words. Uh, Debbie, can you read this for us? You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Yeah. So to this quarter's theme of our study is to rest in Christ. God has made us as an empty vessel that can only be filled by God, nothing else. If we fill it with something else, we will become restless. So how true his statement is. Okay. Our hearts is restless until it rests in you. Okay, Elder Hadiano, can you read the next one for us? This is the last quotation, last slide for our study. God's forgiveness is not merely a judicial act by which he sets us free from condemnation. It is not only forgiveness for sin, but reclaiming from sin. It is the outflow of redeeming love that transform the heart. Yeah. So true repentance and true forgiveness will make us, will transform us, not to repeat the mistake, but to truly be a power, more powerful witness. So as a result of uh, David's sin, he became a better believer, a better disciple of Jesus. Okay, that's why he wrote so many psalms to encourage us. Without this episode, uh, he would not have written so many words of encouragement and inspiration to inspire us. Okay, uh, we still have about five minutes. Anyone has any question or any input or anything to add? Feel free to unmute and share with us.
Uh, Pastor, I think we need a period of uh, self-examination and self-searching to find out where we go wrong and how to go about it and ask a mentor, if you have one, to guide us. Yeah. You're right. And then this lesson also teach us not to be judgmental, isn't it? Right now. Because whatever you when you grow over people's misfortune, like uh, last time when uh, Pastor Kong he committed this CBT, criminal breach of trust, a lot of people point fingers at the church and point fingers at him. But we don't realize that uh, God loved him even more. That's why God allowed him to go through this trial. So if you're interested, please send me a message that you want to watch the whole entire series. Uh, this is a public uh, video that is made public, but very few Christians know about it. Anyone else? Um, yeah, GM. This lesson brings to my mind the parable uh, of, the re of the return of the unclean spirit. So when we truly repent, it's not just stopping at uh, seizing of the of the sin, but rather to replace it with uh, what is right, rightful thinking and right, uh, holy thinking, holy actions and thoughts. Okay, GM, you you say something very interesting. You said when we cast out evil spirits from our body, we need the Holy Spirit to replace. Uh, I think King David when he wrote the the repentance psalm in 51, he said, do not take away the Holy Spirit. Okay, Do not cast me away from your presence and give me the Holy Spirit. I think that is very interesting. Uh, what we need to ask uh, is actually for the Holy Spirit to do God's will. Uh, being forgiven is one step. And the next step is the, the feeling of the Holy Spirit okay, to do his will. Anyone else? Any question you want to ask? You know, previously you were saying about uh, the question you asked is why the innocent people were punished and not the person who uh, commit the sin. But I think sometimes when someone, when you commit the sin and your innocent family members are punished, it's more painful than you being punished because you see the consequences of your sin that your loved ones suffer, I think it's harder to take than you get the punishment. So although the innocent people die, but sometimes also not a bad thing because then you don't have to suffer uh, <laughs> all the backlashes from other people, so which is not a bad thing. But I think... Uh, this way, especially uh, uh, Bathsheba's son died, she is also punished because a mother who bear a child, the child died is a great punishment. So I think maybe that is the worst consequences than to be punished. Yeah. I think, Melissa, you are right. When we have children, they say children is like part of our heart coming out of our body and running around. So when our children has been bullied by somebody, hurt or even uh, something worse, it really hurt the parents more. Reminds me of a, a story, I don't know how true. The, the son and the father were arguing over the, the grandson, which is the man's son. Uh, the, the father has one way to parent the child and the grandfather has another way. So they were arguing. So both of them would not want to give way. So the son, in order to, the father, in order to uh, pun, uh, punish the grandfather, which is his father, he said, you know, you 
I cannot punish you. I cannot slap you. I, I will slap your son. So he's going to slap himself. Okay. He's going to hurt himself. So in the end, the father felt bad because that's his own son. Okay, any other thoughts? Anything you'd like to share? I think one thing we can also learn uh, uh, when you do something wrong, uh, don't find excuses. Right? Uh, just like David, he committed sin. He did not blame anybody else except himself. But many times we, we blame God, we blame the devil, we blame somebody else except ourselves. So when you want to uh, be truly repentant, uh, be upfront about your own faults. Okay, It's not always somebody's fault. Okay, I think it's time's up. Let's say a prayer as we end today's lesson. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lesson we have learned today. The sin of David was great, but your forgiveness is greater. Help us in our spiritual journey. Sometimes we deviate into sin. Lord, forgive us. Help us to come to the acknowledgement of our sin and turn back to you. Transform our hearts just like you have transformed David. Do not cast out your presence from us and give us the Holy Spirit. Help us to teach others. Give testimony of our journey, of your forgiveness of our sin, so that sinners will turn back to you. Help us to bring others who are wandering from the truth so that we can cover a multitude of sins. So bless us today and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. God bless you, Pastor Mark. God bless everybody. Thank you.